Hey, welcome and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my March unboxing, which is going to be super interesting. I just got an email from Fairy Loot saying that their late box is going to be even later, as in they don't have the books yet. So I'll be getting them in April, which I think makes it fair game to put them in my April unboxing. However, I do have Fay Crate, my very first box from them. Not a subscription. I'm still on their wait list, but Fay Fairy, kind of the same. Oh God, is that blasphemy? Are they going to come for me? Are they gonna come for me? Maybe I have to be outside. But like, if you wanna take me to your court and like, have a trial, I'll be here. Anyway, happy March. Happy William Readathon if you're participating. I already picked my TBR, but I'm sure there'll be challenges and let's see if we can get any of these books to fit them. I also have no idea what's in literally half these boxes because they're completely unmarked. I even got one from a company I've never heard of and don't subscribe to. So won't this be fun for everyone? <laughs> Let's get going. This is a loom crate and this is a safe one to open because I know this is going to be something that I ordered. It shipped from the UK. I don't live in the UK. Despite my begging my husband to move to the UK. I got all the money we'd save on shipping, honey. Oh, okay. This is Amelie Winslow's Dark Star Burning, Ash Falls White. This is the second book in the Song of the Last Kingdom duology. I read the first one. It's one of their most beautiful books ever, the first one. Song of Silver, Flame Night Night. I'll pop a picture up here. I actually really enjoyed it. I forget if I gave it four or five stars. But the love, like the romance was so pure. It's about this girl who kind of gets saved by this guy from this like kind of brothelish tea room situation when he notices she has this mark on her and he's like mm, that's sus you might have some powers let me take you to like the school I'm training at and they go on this big adventure and there's all these like demon gods in the front cover and I made fun of the tortoise and it turns out it is actually a scary tortoise because tortoises apparently can be scary if they're the size of the freaking sky so yeah good times I really enjoyed it I'm looking forward to the sequel look how stunning this is oh it is signed too okay okay no reverse dust jacket which is all right by me I do very much prefer the color scheme in the first one but I get a horse in this one why does it have pointy teeth Oh, they're all demons again. We have demon foxes. We have twin demon fox, foxes, fox. Can't we have nice, cute, fluffy animals? This is a duology. All right. Well, I'm really curious to see how it ends. You never get the second book shorter in a duology. Is that a thing now? Okay, well, it's beautiful. I'm very glad I got it. Very curious to see how that one ends. Let's see what's up next. Okay, I do know what this is. My mail lady actually told me she saw this one get dropped. So open it and make sure it's okay. And I did, and it was not. So this is Fairy Loot's edition of Iron Flame, which I was on queue for for like ever. And it is damaged. The binding is broken. And I already emailed them and they don't have any more signed editions. So I get to choose if I want my money back or an unsigned edition. Um, you can see the binding broken. I guess I have it, but it really bothers me. Here is the reverse jacket if you have not seen it. There's the signature. I don't know. I wasn't gonna read it, so it doesn't matter a ton, but it really does bother me that the binding it's broken. So tell me what I should do. Do I get the replacement without the signature or do I get my money back? Either way, I'm not happy. <laughs> Fairy Loot, you are having a really bad month with me this March. Like, really bad month with me this March. But I'm very grateful to my mail lady. Thank you, Kathy. We exchange like Christmas cards and birthday cards. It's welcome to the suburbs. Let's go next with the other Fairy Loot one I got. This was such a random pick for me, but after I had so much fun with Bride, and this sounded so good, I just thought, why not? It was giving me more like Allie Hazelwood vibes. I liked the cover. I thought the paw prints were adorable. Did I overpay for what I'm getting in this book? Oh my god, there aren't even like end page designs. Did I read anything about this book? No, no, I didn't. <laughs> Tell me it's signed. Tell me it's signed and I'll be okay. Oh, it's signed and she wrote a full name and there's a little heart. Okay. So this is a fake mate by Lana Ferguson. And I've been eyeing this book. It looks super cute. It sounds like one of those old books that we all used to read, like old shifter romances. Do you know what I mean? So I was kind of intrigued. So this is about Mackenzie and she is only a year out of residency. She hasn't had a good date in months. 
and her grandma's obsession, okay, with her finding the perfect meat, which is about to drive her barking mad. Sorry, sorry, I'm fine. So it should be like this teeny tiny little thing, right? When she lies about meeting someone, like, so what? She met someone, big deal. But she blurts out the name of the last man she would ever date. Noah, the big bad wolf of Denver general. <laughs> A hospital romance. We are getting Grey's Anatomy with faded paints and wolves, guys. There better be nodding. Noah, he is a cardiologist and a grump. So we've got, I'm assuming, grumpy sunshine. This better be grumpy sunshine. I hope it's grumpy sunshine. He's unmuted alpha. Yay. then an anonymous tip brings something to light. He needs to come clean to the board and risk his career or find a mate. I guess you have to be mated. You have to be mated. What kind of world is this? A fun one for us to read about. So when the chatty, overly friendly ER doctor asks him to be her fake boyfriend and the same day he's supposed to meet the board, kiss me. So Mackenzie gets her grandma off her back and Noah gets a chance to prove he can continue to work without a real mate. You don't know you're in a book. It's fine. And then, of course, the fake main act turns into friends with benefits. They quickly realize love is a whole different kind of animal. Please be as cheesy as I hope you're going to be. Oh no, there's a flaw on my cover. Are you kidding? No. I cannot make this up. Well, you have failed me utterly this month, Fairy Loot. Fairy Loot, zero for three. I guess zero for four because technically I get the YA adult combo. Okay, what is not going to disappoint me? <laughs> Let's find out what this is from Bookish Box because it's insanely heavy and I'm dying to know. Oh, okay, I do know what this is. We've got the War of Lost Heart series by Chris Broadbent. This is Daughter of No Worlds. No, no, I still haven't read the series, which means I haven't read her other series because I won't let myself. So am I completely behind on this author? Yes, but now, now I'm very motivated to finally read her first series because look how gorgeous. Okay, so we've got Tasana, and she learned to survive with nothing but sharp wit and a touch of magic after she was ripped from her forgotten homeland as a child. But the night she tries to buy her freedom, she barely escapes with her life. So she is desperate to save the best friend that she left behind. Oh dear. So she journeys to the Orders, the most powerful organization of magic wielders in the world. But to join their ranks, she must complete an apprenticeship with, okay, could we have a longer name? Maxentarius. Maxentarius? Max. She has to complete an apprenticeship with Max, a handsome and reclusive fire wielder who despises the Orders and who I have now reduced to a dog's name. Sorry. The Order's intentions are cryptic, and she must prove herself under the threat of looming war, but even more dangerous are her growing feelings for Puppy Boy. The bloody past he wants may be the key to her future or the downfall of the most. So basically, gambling at the Order is deadly games, so she will stop at nothing, even if it means wielding death itself. I'm very excited. This is beautiful. Uh, butterflies make me nervous because, you know, <laughs> they're fragile, so let's hope we're going with the whole transformation. Yes this this is stunning like are y'all seeing this oh what a beautiful broken butterfly you are okay beautiful broken butterfly well all right sure i am fragments of many things but a whole of only myself i'm a daughter of no worlds and all worlds and i am not done yet apparently she wears the butterfly dress or they're making that up I don't know. They're really harping on the butterfly dress, though. I'm assuming it's a thing. And then we got our characters. I am not in love with the end papers. No. And they're the same in both. We could have done something more colorful here. I feel like. You're gonna be bloody, aren't you? And then we have book two, Children of Fallen Gods. Now we're going with snakes. All right, we are in our reputation era. Or Tasana here. I'm not reading any quotes or anything. Or something about temps. That's all I'm saying. This must be Max. Possibly. I'm getting like Shadow Hunters vibes with this guy. Oh, they're in love. Spoilers. Eh, it looks like a war. We were told there was a war. I feel like that's fine. The show. We got snakes. And now we're going with feathers. Mother of Death and Dawn. It is really hard to read that font if you don't know what it actually says or I'm on too much cold medication. 
Wow. The reverse dust jackets are insane. Does this remind anyone a little bit of Nerdy Ink Style? No, just kidding. Didn't she used to have blonde hair? Whatever. I need to dye my hair. I missed my last hair appointment. It's been like four months. It looks tragic. I am sorry, y'all. Let's see all those together. I like the effect. I like it. They look really good together. Okay. It's just seemed to go from butterflies to snakes to feathers. That is an interesting transformation to Sana. The symbolism there is unique. I'm really glad I got these from Bookish Box. I swear, their sales, so much better than any of the other book sales. Like, they actually make enough books for subscribers. What a novel concept, ha. Huh? Did you guys see the new fairy loot queue system, by the way? Horrendous, right? Horrendous! What was that? If you let your phone or iPad go to sleep, it bumps you to the back again. Next up, let's do... Probably some... Hey, hot stuff. Let's hope y'all did some more exciting annotation stuff because, man, they were really boring last month. Sticker. Okay, here is our annotation. Oh, we get art and just, it's just art. Oh, this is great, a hockey romance. Are we over hockey yet? No, yes, maybe. Okay, so we got Nina, Rhodes, Screaming, Ghost Sports, LAMO, Major Book Boyfriend Material, Fanning Myself, In My Feels, Favorite Quotes, Relatable layup. I, I don't know. I feel like they used to be more fun, but that's okay. May all your, your dreams be as wild as you, Icebound. She does needlepoint? Okay. I've always wanted to try, but I feel like it's gonna be a migraine trigger, which is such a Bummer, right? A sizzling laugh out loud hockey romance full of spice, smooches, and spoons. If you're putting smooches on your front cover, I'm concerned by the level of spice, but if it's probably smut. So for those of you who do not subscribe to this and want to read it, it is on KU, just letting you know. So this is about Road Tremblay, Nashville's naughtiest hockey player. After some incident that is called the Tenerife Incident, which is and with capitals, so, oh dear. He has a thigh tattoo that is apparently catnip for women and a wicked smile that should come with a warning label. Thigh tattoo? Mm, maybe. What's it up? Everyone apparently is flocking to the NHL's residence. Bad boy! Oh God, he accidentally set a yacht on fire while bringing a woman to the brink of ecstasy. I'm betting this is not like a force wing thing. I'm sure there's no lightning powers involved, but boy, wouldn't that be a twist? But that happened over a decade ago. Good for you. Now at 33, Rhodes searching for something real. He's ready to get down on one knee. Both. For the right person, sorry, I'm adding things, but he has one rule, no dating anyone under 30. I hate you already, you are gross. Now we've got Nina, who has sworn off men who look like fallen angels on skates. She's a feisty art student and she is done molding herself to fit into someone's life after her last relationship fiasco. Okay, sure, that's very specific. Her last semester of college is about her, her pottery dreams, except one fateful night forces her into a faux situationship with Road. Road falls first and he falls hard. Except he thinks he's fake dating a 30 year old doctor. As secrets become revealed, his biggest temptation quickly becomes off limits. But Nina soon realizes the cross stitching cat daddy is with the chaos in her soul crush. He's the cross stitcher, and Nina's fiery passion might burn hot enough to melt Rhodes' icy boundary. What is this chaos I'm reading? This sounds insane. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is about Rhode, who is the NHL bad boy who lit a yacht on fire 10 years ago, and that's what he's famous for. He's now 33, ready to settle down. Oh no, he won't date anyone under 30. That's good, good for you, Rhode. I misread that in my brain because men are usually gross. You're not being gross. Good Good for you. And now we've got Nina, who's an art student, who's sworn off hockey players, now is in a situationship with the NHL bad boy, only somehow he thinks she is a 30-year-old doctor? I'm sorry, what? She's in her last semester of college and she is a pottery student. Marry the rich hockey player. She realizes the cross 
cross-stitching cat daddy is the chaos her soul craves. If he is a cross-stitching cat daddy, Nina's fiery passion might burn hot enough to melt Rhodes' icy boundaries. The pottery student has the fiery passion, not the NHL bad boy. This book is all over the place. You know what? I kind of love it. I feel like hockey is not going to matter at all in this book, which works for me so well. Okay, you know what? I want to read this very badly. All right, what's next? We're gonna do the one-off Fae Crate. So I am not a subscriber, like I said, I'm on their wait list, but I really wanted to test out one of their books and I wanna read this one so badly because it is about something I am obsessed with and you're gonna be like, you're obsessed with everything. It's about people hooking up, that's enough for you. It's about Fae, that's enough for you. It's about dragons, that's enough for you. And that's enough out of you. Okay, but you're not wrong. So this is the Tattered Curtains series from Greer Rivers. In case you don't know, the first book is Phantom, as in Phantom of the Opera, one of my major obsessions in this life. I promise you. Okay, so this is about a guy who witnessed Scarlet Day's dark side and has been obsessed with her ever since. Their families are apparently like mortal enemies, very like Romeo and Juliet, and he's been hiding in the shadows, being her secret, protecting her from afar until an enemy from his past sets his sights on her. So Scarlet gets caught in the middle of their families and while well, her mind's playing tricks on her and like very, you know, music of the night, like if you don't know the play, forget it. When a panic attack goes horribly wrong, he emerges from the shadows to save her. Now that she's mine. He can't let her go. He's master of the darkness. She tempts me with her light, but when the mask is gone, will she fear the monster underneath? Uh, I'm assuming from the piano keys, we are going to have some kind of music. I really, 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 really hope there is a piano on the cover as well. Is it signed? It is. So, or digitally maybe? That looks very digital. There's no extras. No reverse dust jackets, no end papers. This is my very first experience with Fae Crate. So I don't remember what the prices were. I'm not like, maybe it is hand signed because that's in a different spot, isn't it? This we get the famous rose, which is looking a little squash and a little more like a tulip, but I know it's a rose because I know the story. She's fixing him, right? That's fixing. This is dreadful. And we end on Rogue. Still hiding that side of his face. I don't know. We're getting cards. Diamonds and hearts. Well, this is my first experience with Fake Rage. I like it. I'm not like dying over it though. I didn't realize they weren't going to do like any reverse jackets or any end paper art or anything along those lines because I never read the fine print because I know that I want the books. But I'm so excited to have special editions to those because I'm not sure anyone else has ever made them. Watch Arcane do them next. Just, just watch. Still glad to have them. Next. Bookish Box. Let's see what Bookish Box sent me this month. Oh, they went back to their old. Have you guys seen these? Since when are they doing these again? I love these. I've used these for so many random things. They're actually really useful. November and Dalt Box. Rock on, Bookish Box. Rock on. The Book of Asriel. This is so cute. Look, they give you all the tropes, like in the Instagram photos. I love these. Unique World, Gods, Monsters, Humans, Trauma, PTSD, Healing Journey, Playful Banter, Forbidden Love Trope, Action Pact, Morley Gray and Cheeky Heroin. Trauma, PTSD, Healing Journey, Playful Banter. This is my life. Okay, The Book of Asriel. I I think I started reading this or something. Here's the cover. This is by Amber V. Nicole. Love is the purest form of destruction there is. Maybe. We've got reversed dust jack. Ooh, the vibes. This is pretty stunning. Not gonna lie to you. Oh, I love the naked book. Are you seeing this? This is beautiful. You can't break me, world and and the, the end pages, these are beautiful. They're skulls, but they're pretty skulls. Very yummy pair. Gonna be the same in the back of their YouTube. Oh no, they're not. Okay. Bookish box going really freaking hard for the book of Asriel. We are signed. That is a beautiful page for signing. Look at the author page. They went so hard on this. Wow. 
Okay, so apparently this is about a chick named Diana whose sister was dying and she was super upset, so she like prayed to anyone and everyone and the only one who answered is a monster worse than any nightmare and now she does whatever Caden asks, okay? Whatever he asks, even if it means securing an ancient relic from the very creatures that hunt her. Oh, that sounds fun for Diana. And then it's also about a king from long ago. In the old world, his name was Sam Kiel. In the new world, it's Liam, but he's always had one title and that is World Under. Fun. Where's Asriel? We've got Sam Kill, we've got Liam, we've got World Under, we've got Caden, Diana. There's no Asriel. Maybe it's just a book? So anyway, this World Under guy kind of sucks. After the God's War, he locked away, denied his crown, and abandoned all those who needed him most. How super duper nice. Now an attack on those he holds dear sends him back to the one realm he never wished again and into the sights of an enemy he thought he imprisoned eons ago. Maybe that's Asriel. Maybe that's why he needs the book. I don't know. No one's telling me what the book is or if Asriel's a person. Okay, so now enemies older than time have to put aside their differences and work together to save the world and all the realms in between. Cool. Is it actually a book? I have the book. All right, next up from Bookish Box, we have December 2023. Okay. Oh my god, this is no, you did not. Okay, it's slightly messed up, but it looks like it's been in the water, so I kind of like it. All right, it's Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry, the New York Times bestselling author, and it's a little wrinkled, but I feel like a lot of them are going to be, because look, look, they did a little, it's the <laughs> door. Have you seen how cute this is? And you open it, and there's them. No one else is going to be as entertained by this as I am, but this is so cute. Oh my goodness. So this is the prequel to Legends and Lattes, which I love, 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 which is about an orc who retires and just wants like a quiet life and opens a coffee shop and makes a wonderful found family and it's delightful, okay? So this is about Viv and I'm pretty sure, yeah, so she gets wounded in battle and she's packed off and needs to go recuperate and she winds up in this sleepy little beach town and she's spending her hours in a bookshop with a foul mouth proprietor. Oh, this sounds so good. And like, it's the last thing that she wanted, but it's just what she needed. Travis Baldry, you're gonna make this so good. But apparently an adventure isn't all that far away because a suspicious traveler in gray, a gnome with a chip on her shoulder, a summer fling, and an improbable number of skeletons prove Merc to be more eventful than Viv could have ever expected. Look how amazing this is. Like, are you all seeing this? I just want to dive in. Bookish box. This is one of my favorite. Are you kidding? This is one of my, how am I going to figure out how to display this? Are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? This is one of my favorite books y'all have ever done. I am dying over this. I'm a little sad, it's a little wrinkled, but on the other hand, it makes it feel like it went to the beach. It's really from work. Sorry, sorry, I'm fine. I'm on cold meds. This is so cute though. I love it so much. I don't even want to bother them about the wrinkled cover. That's my favorite book that I've opened so far by like such a wide margin. Let's see what's next. Oh, I know. Let's open the really pretty Moonlight book box. And did I get a subscription offer from them? Yes, I did! Apparently they're gonna be like four to six weeks behind or something, but fine, whatever. You'll be seeing their subscriptions coming monthly as well. I'm so excited. I'm so, that is not safe for Jesus God. I don't think I can show this piece of artwork. <laughs> Move my box. Probably smut who. Look at their boxes though. And you know what they call us? They're moonbeams. I'm a moonbeam. My God, I would not want to be with you. That is a tree branch. Do not look happy. You are about to get impaled. Sorry, I'm good. So Chloe Chastain has given us the world's most well endowed man in the Flame King's captive. And apparently she's going to be enjoying herself quite a lot in this book. Let's see. Give me your lips, Shalyn. I've waited 500 years to meet you. That's your greeting? That better not be your greeting. Okay. We got a dragon. That would make sense. This is beautiful. I think this is my first book from them. I think. No, I feel like I've seen this box before. Ooh, that's some artwork. He looks cold. She'll warm you up. Don't worry. Oh, those hand signatures, they are getting harder and harder to come by. There is a Faded Maid's 
fantasy romance. There is a description in the book. I love that. That's so nice. Thank you so much. I ordered so many books and I remember these. So the tagline is he snatched me from the jaws of death for one reason to be his. I love Faded Mate so much. So this is about Isabel. Isabel, not Isabel. I'm going to mess this up 15,000 times, I'm sure. And she was a dead king's sacrificial <laughs> pride. Yikes! Until his murderer claimed her for his. Oh, fun. So apparently Zabriel, he gets the B in his name, sure, invaded her country on the back of a monstrous fire-breathing dragon and took her as his prisoner. Boy, she likes to be a sacrifice, a prisoner, get kidnapped. This is a fun, fun world for her. Okay, I'm sorry, Isabel. So he's lethal, he towers over her in his steel plate armor, he could easily crush the life out of her, but the Flame King isn't interested in harming her. Are we surprised? Are we at all shocked? No, of course we're not. Instead, he hurts everyone who hurts her. Oh, I love that trope in a storm of fire and vengeance. Okay, maybe we could back that off a tiny bit. Apparently her country is in big, 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 big trouble. She's trying to find everyone who's missing, including like entire villages and her entire family. And meanwhile, she's got Zabriel who's setting her heart and soul ablaze every time he growls mine and calls her Omega. Apparently in this world, it just means like precious one, but we'll see. We'll see. And of course, he's the only one who is strong enough to help her defeat everyone threatening her kingdom from an ancient foe. Oh, author's note, it is a slow burn, non-shifter, MF Omegaverse romance. First book in Fire and Desire trilogy. It contains steamy content that increases with each subsequent book and ends on a cliffhanger. Moonlight book box. I'm gonna need the rest. Thank you. The copyright's 2023. We'll be just putting this one on a shelf, won't we? Let's see what's next. Oh, let's open the one that's confusing me. This says Mystic Box. I don't subscribe to a box called Mystic Box. I don't remember buying anything. A box called Mystic Box that doesn't rule much out. Oh, Arcane Society. That's right. They have three book boxes. Bell Book Box, Mystic Box, and arcane. Okay, they just used the mystic box. Oh, here's a little pen. Ooh, this is fun! I actually like this one. I like all their pins, but that's kind of like generically cool. In, in a good way! All right, we have Flames of Chaos by Amelia Hutchins and Ashes of Chaos. These are the first two books in the Legacy of the Nine Realms series. I'm assuming there's more. If there's putting one and two on there. It's not just duology. Let's take a look at these. This is beautiful. Oh, that's so pretty, isn't it? Oh, no reverse dust jacket, but wow. That is, that's intense. There we've got our thing, but I think they're signed. That one's signed. It was brutal and yet beautiful. Uh oh, the color scheme is stunning. Here is book two. That's our Chicky Poo number one. And we're going on to meet our guy. He's really angry. Why do you look so much older here? I guess he likes birds. That's just okay. Oh boy. Are we going? We're definitely having witchcraft here. I'm getting the. Oh gosh. That's horrifying. That's. That's nice. Uh, is stained glass going to be a theme? Yay, nay. No, yes. This gal here is Aria. PLO. I miss you. Love the name. So anyway, apparently Arya and her sisters return to the human realm. I don't know where they were. It does not say of Haven Falls to find one of their own that has gone missing. And they soon discover the things in the human realm. Nothing is what it seems, including Nox over here. I can't hold them both, okay. He is egotistical, self-centered, and frustratingly gorgeous, and apparently declared himself king. Oh, we're not full of ourselves at all, are we not? No. Apparently sparks fly when they enter a fiery battle of wills. Are we shocked? No, we're not shocked to hear this. Especially when Arya learns she is more than just a witch in the Hecate blood bloodline. Go get him, Arya. Now, Nox, of course, has ulterior motives, never expected Arya to challenge him, of course, because she's a woman. You look like misogynist don't you? He does, doesn't he? He's been moving places and set the stage for a war he's been planning for over 500, 500 years, so you're not human either. What are you? 
you're not a witch, are you? I shouldn't be sexist. Maybe he's a witch too. But Arya is his sworn enemy and he hates himself for craving her kisses. We got some serious enemies to lover stuff going on here. Oh, oh, he thought one taste and he could get her out of his system. That's not the way it works in these books nor real life. The question is, will he let go of his memories, driving his need for revenge? Or will he push the boundaries and claim what is his by right? Either way, apparently, war is inevitable. Good luck to our new not-so-happy couple. Now we've got Owl Crate. This is my second YA box from them. I'm still not, like, wild about their YA book selections. I think I'm moving further and further away from YA, which is not, like, shocking grown up most days. But I'm not off their adult wait list yet, so I'm sticking to it and going for it. I'll create March Young Adult Secrets and Masks. Spoiler warning, not reading it. Oh! Oh! What is this? It's not always enough to go looking for the place we belong. Sometimes we need to make that place. This is so cute! It's resealable. I would not trust it at all ever. What is this from? This is super cute! For the very, very secret society of which is reusable snack bag. I guess for non-liquids, which is what an intelligent person would have already known it was for. I don't remember the koi. The koi was what threw me. But that's adorable. That's actually cute and... No way! This year's been nothing but bad luck anyway. Maybe it's like Uno Reverse. Wait, I can't open an umbrella. Is there a button? Are you telling me not to open you because it's bad luck? I broke it. Now it's cute! Now it doesn't fold down. I guess it was bad luck to open it Apparently it's from Spirited Away. Perfect pairing collections! Shades of Magic Trilogy. They're fun, they slide. Well, my first one was kind of broken, huh? Oh! This is so cute! Hear me, dragons. Go away from me. <laughs> I love it. No, that's super cute. That says Al. That's adorable. That's darling. It's a journal. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's a study in drowning. This is amazing! I accidentally got two of them! I don't think you were supposed to! No, you are not! The Last Blood Carver by Vanessa Lay or Lee. Curse your wretched little heart. Oh, we got a mask on the side? This, this is really pretty. Oh, wow. Oh, those are knives. That's, that's, oh no. Oh, it's a museum. Okay, museums are less creepy. I li- I- <laughs> It's what I was first saying. Museums are acceptable for with, with skeletons. They all wore masks, but he'd taken his off for her. Oh. Oh, wow. They nailed this art. I mean, that's fairy loot level. Oh, there's- there's gilding! I mean, that's on par with fairy loot. Oh, I want to read about these two now. You can like feel the, wow. Oh, and here's the bound, this is my favorite. I love that they do a bound letter with the signature. Like, I love that. And you know what's nice? They actually have the book description. Let's see what it says. Okay, so this is about Mika. And also a blood cover, a cold-hearted, ruthless being who can alter human biology with just a touch. Wait, can you rev up my metabolism? <gasps> can you give me an immune system? I've been sick. I've been on antibiotics every month, girl, since October. Please, I'm dying over here. Okay, so she lives in the harsh industrial city of Bayamus. She is not seen as the healer she was meant to be, but as the monster that kills for pleasure. Oh, poor baby. And in the city's criminal underbelly, the rarest of monsters are traded for gold. Uh oh, girl, run. When she's finally caught by the infamous butchers, she's auctioned off to the highest bidder, a mysterious girl garbed in white. Well, they could go either way. Okay, 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 here we go. But the strange buyer does not want to use her as an assassin or a trophy piece. She just wants to use her blood carving to heal 
the last person who saw her father's killer. That is totally reasonable. So Nika delves into the investigation. I mean, the wealthiest and most powerful. So we've got like a mystery going on here and all signs point to Ben Cochin, an alluring entitled physician's aide intent on casting her out of his opulent world. Enemies to lovers, investigation. This is sounding way less bloody than I was afraid of. This is not bad and she's doing a good deed. This is all good. This is all good. But despite his relentless attempts to push her away, something inexplicable draws Nika to him. It's called love, buddy. It's called sparks. It's, it's called lust, at least. While she discovers Cochin is not who he claims to be, Nika must face a greater, more terrifying evil, turning her quest for justice into a fight for her life. Uh-oh. Her only chance to survive lives in a terrible choice. Can the dreaded monster the city fears or risk destroying herself and the future of her kind? Is this a standalone too? And if it's YA, there's no way it's gonna get too horrendous, right? Okay, I am not. Sorry, I got this. All right, I'll create. You know what? This was kind of a rocking box. I'm not gonna lie. Now I'm a little scared for a Luma crate. This thing got I don't know if you can see it. There's a giant hole here. This thing got pretty beat up. I did not open it in advance, but I'm a little nervous. So here is, if you want to pause, like, I'm bad at this. All right, first up we have, oh, they labeled it for me. A plant pot. I can't mess this up. I love their last one. I use it to hold bookmarks. Oh, I love this with the jellyfish. It's under the sea. The whole thing, I think, is fantasy. <laughs> so our next fandom neutral book pod is inspired by all mythical sea creatures. Which one is your favorite? Whichever one doesn't want to eat me. The Little Mermaid was my favorite movie for like 20 years. Obviously The Little Mermaid. Then I kind of became a Beauty and the Beast girl because I can't stop laughing when Ariel says, I'm 16 years old. I'm not a child. And yes, you are a girl. <gasps> yes! Oh my god, mine, I have used the last one that we got of these so often. Mine is practically, the button is like falling off. Yes, it is. If you don't have these, it's a, you put your fancy books in these, it's a book cover, okay? And it protects them and they're amazing. I love these. These book boxes are so good. The items are so good. Yes. Two of my favorite things that I've gotten ever from you guys and you're giving me more. Aluma Crate, I don't deserve you. I don't deserve you. The book box. Everyone loves these. Legends of Mythical Sea Creatures. Mythical Sea Creatures, the Kraken Mermaid's Leviathan. Tales from the deepest depths of the ocean. Look how, are you gonna focus? Pretty this one is. Y'all, I'm, so, I'm, oh. I'm mad. <laughs> All right. I guess I am dressed for fantasy. Sorry, I'll stop now. Your magic is wonderful. I'll remember you. So it looks like we've got sticky notes that they look like they weirdly printed. It's just a little fuzzy. Is there anything special about them I need to know? Probably. Kraken in the Deep Book Jacket. Oh, the adventures of Amina El Sarafi. This was inspired by, oh my God, I get it, I get it, I get it. These sticky notes were inspired by In Deeper Waters. Sure. They're cute. I love sticky notes. They're too pretty to use, but maybe I will eventually. You killed that. Aluma Great. Like, that was amazing. Book boxes are rocking out. Okay, y'all. I'm so excited to read this book. I was excited before I got it, but look at Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan. Are y'all seeing this? Like, Stunning. Are you seeing this? Oh my god. Okay. No reverse dust. Okay. Oh my goodness. Are you are you kidding? This is so ooh. An inbound note? That's cool. This is beautiful. I am super excited to read this. I don't know why I'm singing. Welcome to Tea and Coffee. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. So this is the shining pearl of human civilization and a safe haven for those fleeing civil unrest, or at least that's how it's supposed to first appear. Dun dun dun. Sorry, I'm done. No, I'm not. You know I'm not. So this is a semi-flooded city. 
as you can totally see. And humans are up here living on top. Well, down below is where all the magical creatures, sirens, sea witches, kelpies, and kappas live in the polluted waters. Gee, that seems fair, doesn't it? So half siren Mira has just been promoted to captain of the Borden Guard, and she's hoping to use this opportunity to like help her people, right? But earning the trust and respect of her human colleagues isn't like already hard enough. Everything Mira has worked so hard for is put in jeopardy when Nami, a know-it-all water dragon, so I'm assuming that would be Nami, who's freaking gorgeous. Check out Nami. Yeah, is exiled to the city. There's some timing, Nami. You couldn't have waited like. I don't know, a couple months to do whatever you did. When extremists sabotage the annual boat race, <laughs> violence erupts, and of course there's a clampdown on like the Fathom folk who are the, you know, magical creatures. Both Nami and Mira have to decide if the cost of change is worth paying or if Tian Kawai should be left to drown. It sounds so good. I've read slightly more descriptive summaries of it and it definitely sounds like there's a lot of political things and our dragon friend over there definitely wants to side with like the rebellion and she's all against it and poor Mira is just like no slow down we just got the humans to trust us we can fix everything that kind of thing and I feel like there's gonna be some romantic tension going on so I'm really excited to read this one. It is so stunning. They outdid themselves with the colors. I was not expecting them to go this bright and vivid, especially with the color scheme of the rest of the box, but oh my gosh, gorgeous. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching this unboxing. I had uh, so much fun, especially at the end, despite uh, my argument with the umbrella. That's a new one. I'm lying. It's not a new one. I will let you get back to your book and I'll be getting back to mine. I have tons of reading to do for the Aurelium Readathon and hopefully I can sneak one of these in because there are so many I am so excited to read. Thanks so much for joining me again, guys. Bye.